Podcast, sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of The Bobby Bones Show. We're so honored to have back on legendary singer, songwriter, actor. He heads up a label even, a music label, Pat Boone. Yeah. Pat, it's great to have you back on the hey, show. Hey, great to be back again with you. You know, at 89 years young, you don't seem to age. I tell you, I'm still stunned when you say it, when I say it. <laughs> 89, yeah, that was just two or three days ago, my 89th. And now I have to realize I'm embarked already mm -hmm. on my 90th year. It's hard to believe, but, but what an incredible career. You know, I, I brought this up to you before we came in studio, Pat, to where you've been in movies, you mm -hmm. know, starting off in 1960 to the mulligan last year. Yeah. You've constantly got new projects, new music going. Yeah. You know, in fact, I had friends asking me when I said, I'm interviewing Pat Boone, the let, they're like, the Pat Boone, yes. And they're like, is he coming back out with another metal album? <laughs> I said, no, he's got grits now. Yeah, grits, <laughs> yeah, that's a far cry. <laughs> but to think that, that amongst uh, even church people, uh, Pat's got a brand new heavy metal album. Well, because I scrubbed all those songs right. that I did, people thought I was some, that there was something, only humor about it was me doing heavy metal at all, but I was doing them seriously as good songs right. underneath all the cacophony and the screaming and the yelling. Right. Well, and also you did the PR. I mean, you were on every yeah. major you know, yeah. TV show in full leather outfit, yeah. but the songs and the music were legitimate. They were good songs, and, mm -hmm. and so then, Many others of the groups that, whose songs I didn't do, mm -hmm. Poison, Scorpion, Motorhead, all of they would say, do one of our songs, do one <laughs> of our songs. <laughs> so, and you set the trend, I got to brag on you, to where so many people, Tom Jones, and other artists <laughs> copied you. Paul Anka. And, yeah, Paul Anka. Uh, you know, copied what you did because you were ahead of the pack. And it's so many things that you've done in your life, Pat, with, with the music. Over, selling, I think, almost 50 million albums now. Yeah, yeah. And, and I understand, too, that Grits, your new single that's out, is already almost at 150,000. It's listeners. over that now on Spotify. Right. People tuning in to listen to it, which is, and there's a new line dance. You know, line dancing is very popular now. Oh, yeah. It's and the lady whose, lady whose name I for Anne or something, Mary, Nancy, or, anyway, she creates line dancing. Grits. And that she's famous for that. And wow. there is a Grits line dance which has immediately gone to the top of the line dance chart. Right. But you have to listen to Grits to do it. Well, and you and I were joking too, because you know, obviously, you know, you were born in Jacksonville, Florida, and raised here in Nashville, yeah. Tennessee. And you know, and my mom, you know, out of Arkansas and everything, to where Grits was just something you had. It wasn't high-end food. Yeah, and now yeah, we're talking, yeah. it's like, now all, you know, Wolfgang Puck and all these big chefs really? have their versions of grits. Fancy restaurants all over the country uh, advertise shrimp and grits. Something about that combination has struck the fancy of, of the, uh, uh, what do they call them, the gastronomes. Yeah, exactly. Well, I got to bring this up too, Pat, to where you're going to have more singles coming out, you know, this summer, but the full album will release, uh, I think, the first week in September. Yes. With Country Jubilee, I'm, I'm sorry that you couldn't find any huge talent to join you on this. I mean, it <laughs> well, must have been hard on you, knowing all the friends that you knew and you couldn't get anybody to come on this well, album. Well, yeah, I finagled on grits at least <laughs> to get to, uh, Ray Stevens. He introduces the record. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It sounds so good. It's so right. In six days. On the seventh day, he rested. On the eighth day, he created grits, grits. <laughs> <laughs> Bestest food there is. And you've been friends with Ray forever. Always. And so, we both know, had theaters in Branson for a right. while. And now, and now Ray has the cabaret. Yeah, the cabaret. You know, here in Nashville. And I know he's, I believe he's going to ask me to come over and sing it. And maybe he'll introduce it again for I me. I hope he does, because he did a great job on the single. Now, yeah. I wanted to bring up, too, you've got Crystal Gale on here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got Lori Morgan. Yep. You're, you have Dean Miller, Roger Miller's son. Yes. The Gatlin Brothers. Yes. I mean, who else? And, I mean, the and, list goes and, on and, and on. There's a Deborah Allen, I Deborah think. Deborah Allen. Deborah Allen, here and, yeah. yeah. See, a couple of these I wasn't that familiar with, but Jimmy Nichols, who produced it all, right. he could bring, just bring them in, and he said everybody he contacted, you want to do a single with Pat Boone? Yeah, yeah. Didn't even know what it was, but it turned out to be Grits. Wow. And it was fun, and it's a staple, mm -hmm. and we'd ha we just happened to mention Cracker Barrel in it. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad idea, right? <laughs> you know, maybe you get free grits when you go there. Oh. I know I know. back where I'm from, when I was known on TV for a little while, I got free gravy at Bob Evans. 
And I told, and I'm like going, yeah? Free got, gravy. Got a, a little well, bowl of free gravy sounded, because they recognize me. We're laughing, but I've just told, as I come out with a song called Grits and mentioning Cracker Barrel in it, they have advertised they're not serving grits automatically anymore. <laughs> you can buy grits. It's not like two fifty for a little bowl of grits. Right. But people are going to be ordering grits. Oh they want gosh. their grits. Yeah, they do. It's just a staple. It's a southern staple. And that's why I'm dressed like this, is I'm advertising grits. Now, you know, I was kidding you before we started this interview, Pat, to where I thought you had gone and visited Manuel and had this <laughs> custom done here in Nashville. Yeah. You say no. Who makes all the great cowboys. Yeah, and you've worn a few of the outfits. outfits. And... I have, yeah, yeah, I have. But, uh, and but this was a custom-made outfit. It was. My wife made this 40 years ago. Wow. She, she bought the shirt, but she but she did this uh, uh, embroidery or whatever yeah. you call it. Uh, patchwork. Patchwork. On his, and then the milk on the back, because I was already advertising milk. You were all over the milk, milk I, commercials back in Laugh-In. Yes, that's right. And Laugh-In, they didn't realize that, uh, that my milk commercials were only on the West Coast. So about my early growing up experiences with milk and just rhapsodizing about milk. So Sammy Davis on Laugh-In did a... Uh, a parody of that, only his was about his early, young, youthful experiences with Jack Daniels. <laughs> totally and, different And beverage. it was funny, but yeah. people didn't know why. No. What are you, no. What's Yours it? is so much better because you have a glass of milk on the back of the shirt, but I thought this was brand new. You know, and also you tricked me because last time you came on the TV show for the Rock and Review, yeah. you were like in a nice jacket and all this. I'm like going, I'm ready for Pat this I, time. I'm dressing right. I still right. have that jacket. Do you? Yeah. Well, you look right. And it was right before you went on your trip Several. to the Holy Land. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and that, that, that I didn't wear any of this on that, but because it was well, it was fun, too. But it was uh, it was really a holy experience. Right. I've been there over 20 times. Wow. In fact, now that you bring it up, another song I've written and a, and a book I've written as well, but a book, a song called Yehoshua, the oldest rabbi in Israel. I was going to be there for my 20th time. Because uh, I wrote the words to Exodus, which is the second Jewish, it is the Jewish national anthem, second anthem. Mm -hmm. This land is mine, God gave this land to me. Right. I wrote those words to, the, to Ernest Gold's melody. And they consider it their second national anthem. Wow. Until I die, this land is mine. So I was there for that and, and emphasizing the 20th anniversary of the modern, 70th anniversary of the modern state. But... Um, what was my point about that? We were talking about your travels. And you'd <laughs> well, already end the, the travels and the Exodus Holy Land. I got to bring up Land. too, you know, about your book. Yeah. To, to where you've still been on this. And I had the great idea that maybe you need to do an audio version of your book. Yeah. Because now, I, will. now I understand that you're, the book is going everywhere, right? It is. It's going to be in truck stops and airports. And, and it, I designed the cover. Mm -hmm. God told me to do this book, by the way, because I love sharing my faith. But on, right. more and more... According to Barna and Gallup polls, half of America doesn't go to any place of worship, does not read the Bible, right. woefully ignorant about what the Bible says, not sure they want to know. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm so burdened with half of, you know, that's 150, 60 million people right. who are just scripturally and biblically ignorant. I don't mean that pejoratively. No. They just don't know. So the book, book title, first the title is if, just the one word. Mm -hmm. And that word is more in the Bible than any other word. Right. If, 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 if. In, fa in fact, there's no promise of God in the Bible that doesn't come with an if. Mm -hmm. He'll pour everything God has to offer, offer us, even if we don't want it. But it comes with an if. if do we want it? Right. Do we want it enough to seek it? Mm -hmm. Do we want it enough to receive it? And, and, and that's what the big if is. So the four corners of the book uh, look singed like you pulled it out of a, a book burning. Right. And then took a heavy marking pen and just scrawled if on the cover. And then there's a little subtitle, a subtitle at the bottom, the eternal choice we all must make. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm picturing people seeing this in all these public places. If, if what, mm -hmm. if what, if what's that? And then they say, oh, it's not religious. Good, there's a warning sign, not religious. Right. Uh, but life or death. Not religious, but life or mm -hmm. well, what? So open up the book and find out. And it's autobiographical to a degree. Right. I, I want people to know who it is writing well, the book. What a great way to share your faith too, Pat. And, and that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to reach people that no longer know what the Bible says and are not interested enough to find out. Right. And I want to bring up also 
uh, with Country Jubilee coming out in September to where you have your own music label. St yeah. 20 years yep. this label's gone on. And I mean, what major artists, including you, on it? And, and how many of yeah. those artists have achieved gold? Well, they didn't get on the album until they'd achieved gold. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, on the label. Right. It was four artists like me that had had gold records, million sellers, mm -hmm. still performing, and, uh, and were not on a record label because right. they all wanted the new hat, hat guys and, and spending 350000 on an album that never sold. And I, so I wanted all my favorite performers, including Andy Williams, Tony Bennett, uh, Roger Campbell. Miller, Glenn Campbell, um, Patty Page, right. the Sha Na Na, um, the the four not the four lads, but uh, the uh, the uh, some of the quartets mm -hmm. that whose names I'm slipping my mind at the moment. And, but we had about forty different uh, major. And you didn't get on this album, I mean, in this label, right? Until you'd already had gold records and were still performing. And you needed an outlet, and we would spend fifty thousand on an album. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't—it sounds like a lot of money, but it's not for a record album. But it was back then. But I mean, fifty thousand for each. But and if you want to add strings and other instruments, mm -hmm. and you can pay for those yourself. Right. And don't come there with just an idea about a song, and then try to come up with an arrangement. Have it all put together like we always used right. to do. Well, you know, and you are so well known, and I've got to brag on you a bit too, Pat Tor as a songwriter also to where anytime you come back here to Nashville, the Bluebird, every, every place just opens their doors to you and goes, please, Pat, come and perform. <laughs> no, that has to make you feel good. And I'm here for the CMA Right, but that has festival. to make you feel good. Well, of Pat. course, I'm a homeboy. I mean, I've never been thought of so much as a country performer mm -hmm. or even singer. Although all through the years, I was recording all the great country songs by right. the artists that I loved the songs that I love, mm -hmm. my versions of their song, Tennessee Waltz, among them. Right. And then Red Foley's songs, A Closer Walk With Thee, Peace yeah. in the Valley. And that, your father-in-law. Father-in-law. Which, which Chattanooga Shoeshine Boy, your version is so good. Well, I, th I imitated Red the best I could. Which Red was amazing. And you know what? Bing Crosby recorded that same song, had a hit with it. Frank Sinatra recorded Chattanooga Shoeshine Boy. It's one of those songs, though, to where when you hear it, you always think about the great classic movies yeah. and all those things. But, I mean, you managed to stay current, Pat, which a lot of artists have not been able to do. And you started out as, as a young person, you and your brother <laughs> harmonizing yeah. in school. Yeah, in school. And then and yeah, ladies' and, club, sewing clubs. And you got known around Nashville. Around Nashville only. But then I won the Ted Mack Amateur Hour. <laughs> And uh, out of because I won a contest at East Nashville High, mm -hmm. first prize a trip to New York and an audition with Ted Mack. Wow. No, no guarantee I would get on. Right. But I got on. I won three weeks in a row. Nothing came of it until Randy Wood of Dot Records out in Gallatin mm -hmm. had his own startup label, go, doing very well. Contacted me. You want to make a record? I said, Well, yeah, I'd love to. I did. The first record was top. Uh, top 10 million seller, mm -hmm. two hearts, two kisses, one right. heart's not enough, baby, two hearts will make you feel crazy. I don't know how you retain all your hits, just your I hits. I don't, but the, but the million sellers, I have, <laughs> they stick in them. One was Moody River, right. which was a country hit first. Mm -hmm. Texas Woman was a country hit, put me on the cover of the Rolling Stone when I did that one, right. the only time, on the cover of the Rolling Stone. <laughs> and. I mean, it's, I've been a country guy all along, but not thought of mm -hmm. as a country well, guy. Well, you're one of those artists, though, too, Pat. I mean, you know, and, and with a 70-year-plus career, you're able to cross all genres. And, and all joking aside, talking about the heavy metal album, it's not a stretch for you because you're able mm -hmm. to do your own interpretations <laughs> yeah. of these songs and still make them legitimate. And one of my al the re last album is called uh, uh, Legacy. Mm -hmm. And that's something you leave behind for others. And I wrote every song words and music, wow. except one. And I had some musical collaboration with a couple of good songwriters named Paganini and Rachmaninoff. Yeah, those are well known. They, <laughs> and they wrote a melody that had no words. Bum, 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 bum. I wrote a lyric to that gorgeous melody. I, I just don't think, had to I don't sing know, it. is it as good as the horror song, though? I don't know. No, the think, horror of it all. Nothing could top really that. Really jumps out at you. It yeah. does, and I think, you know, it's going to be Halloween again later in the year. There's <laughs> the opportunity. I was on, I was, to speak of Halloween, I was doing the 
uh, with Whoopi Goldberg, the uh, Hollywood Squares. Oh, yeah. She was in the center. She'd replaced Charlie, what's his name, that used to be in the center yep. square. Now she's in the center, and we, we do three shows, and we break for lunch and do two more. And I'm sitting there doing a crossword puzzle. I, I'm not hungry. And, and I didn't know it, but Whoopi was still in the center square. And I hear her say, you know, I play one of your movies for my kids every Halloween. I said, what, do you do? <laughs> yeah, the horror of it all, the movie I oh made. Oh my set, gosh. I play it for my kids. They want to see it every, every Halloween. How incredible is that? Whoopi Goldberg on the Hollywood Squares. Right. That's how well known you my, are. <laughs> yeah, and, and even more so now, 89 years in, yeah. with, with all these hit songs, you got the new single out with Grits. The book If. And you got the book If out, you've got another single coming out, you got the full album which is going to release in September. 21 million sellers in that one album. What's next, Pat? How, how do you stay this vibrant and mm. creating and doing all this music and everything you do still? Well, you know, uh, that's a great question. I, first of all, I, I just spew creativity in one way or another. I, I, I'm always creating or thinking of something great. I've written eight articles on nuclear fusion wow. in science magazines, tutored by a scientist who wanted to meet him create an awareness among people who can't understand the science of it, actually. That would be me. Uh, but fusion is better than fission, because fusion is combining atoms where fission destroys them ah. with all the radioactive fallout. But right. we know fusion is better. However, they, it's estimated $40 billion to complete the research. But, but then you, you, you've got limitless clean energy right from fusion, and the sun itself is a nuclear fusion right. reactor. And in your spare time, when you're not making hit, so hit records and science, songs, then you're also doing air cars. Air cars, and that was the biggest deal in the history of Shark Tank. <laughs> uh, five million asked and received, not received, but, mm -hmm. but, but committed, for the first plant to build a car that runs on highly compressed air. Right. Invented by Guy Negre, who has 51 patents in Formula One racing. So right. this is not a fly-by-night flaky thing. In fact, the engine is still right now in France, where it was invented, driving heavy-duty machinery powered by compressed air. Right. So what's more readily available, environmentally perfect than air? You know, probably need a commercial or a theme song for that. I'll, Just I'll have that to come there, up Pat. with it. Yeah. I mean, I think if anybody is up I, to that, it is you. Yep, I can do you that. Know, and also, I've been told that uh, there's some really cool merch available. T-shirts, hats, you know, not as cool as this. Well, But there are some yeah. good, you know, with Maybe we, we should market this. Yeah, talk to Manuel. You could talk with him in town. Hey, that's a, that's a thought. You know, but it's like, but uh, there's some very cool merch to go along with the new singles and the new album. And, and if it's going book, to be everywhere. Yeah. It's, you've got so many incredible things going on. I know that uh, on your website and your social media, for Pat Boone, you've got a lot of it there. But yeah. uh, what incredible Pat music. Dot com, yeah. I mean, you're doing so much, Pat. I, I'm astounded myself. I mean, I, my wife, I've joked about it many times, but I quote her as saying that she felt like she was married to triplets. <laughs> and she wishes two of them would go away. <laughs> but she, she wanted to keep the one. She just wants one. Yeah. The, the original. Let me give the, keep the original. But we had four, four children, she and I, by the time we were 23. So I was very creative in an early age. <laughs> and still creative at 89. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell I'm you not what, creating other human beings. No, yet. just music and, and you know, yeah. air cars. <laughs> yeah. And a nice book, maybe another book. Yeah. Well, I want to make sure, be sure and add grits to your playlist yeah. wherever you listen to music. I've, I've heard rumors there may be a vinyl album coming out with all of these great guests that September, Pat has in, in join, yeah. you know, join him on it, including Crystal Gale, yeah. uh, Deborah Allen, the Gatlin Brothers. Dean Miller, Ray Stevens, Ray Stevens. The list yeah. goes on and on. Yeah. So you got singles out. You got an album coming out. You got the book out. The documentary's coming soon. I think I'm going to be heading that up. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. I'll tell you what, Pat. It's an honor to have you show on the show, and congratulations. Well, thank you again. Enjoy it always. Okay. And, and you sure asked the best question. The Country Jubilee coming out in September. It's going to be on vinyl. Yeah. And if you get a chance to see Pat Boone live, please do it. You're going to enjoy it as much as we all do. Be careful. I might show up live. Sponsored by the Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a body bone show.